since we have binary addition, we also want to go over binary subtraction. And binary subtraction works the same way that subtraction works in our decimal number system or the numbers that we use uh, in everyday life. We're going to subtract um, from the number above, and if we can't, we're going to have to borrow from the column to the left. So if we take a look at this first example, uh, I know just by looking at it that the number above that I'm subtracting from is larger than the number I'm subtracting. And I can easily go through this number no problem. So I have 1 in the first ones column, I have 1 minus 1, and that's going to be a 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. 1 minus 1 will be a 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. And 1 minus 1 is 0. And we don't have to put that first 0 because it's a leading 0. And there's our answer. And that should be no surprise, and that one's pretty simple. If we take a look at our second example here, this one's going to be a little bit tricky because we're going to have to borrow. And borrowing is not too bad. Uh, it's similar to, like I said, to normal decimal subtraction. So the first character, the first side we subtract is the rightmost side always, just like regular subtraction. So I have 0 minus 1, and for this I have to borrow. So for me to borrow, I have to cross this one out and make it a 0. Okay? But when I bring over that 1 into the column to the right of it, it becomes two ones. So it's just the opposite of what you did when you were adding. So now I have two ones, one of which will be subtracted. So this one here will be subtracted from this one here, and we would have a, we would have a 1 left over. Our next step, we have 0 minus 1 again. And this time again, we'll have to borrow. We can't borrow from the column to the left, so we're going to have to go two columns over. So we're going to borrow from this one. It becomes a 0. And this one would get two ones, one of which we're going to borrow. So this one's gone, and we have two ones. And we can say that that means that we have we can subtract from maybe this one and this one, leaving, again, just that single one. In the next column, I now have 1 minus 0. So that's 1. This one, I have 0 minus 1. And again, we're going to have to borrow all the way from the next one we find. That'll leave 0. This will leave 2 ones. We're going to cross 1 out because we're borrowing it for this one and we're crossing one out to borrow for this one. So we'll have one minus, or there's two ones, one and one minus the one down here in our original, so we'll be left with the remainder of one down there. And the next column, we have, we have the one minus the one, so we have a zero. Then we have a one minus zero, so we have a 1. A 0 minus 0 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. So we don't even really need those two zeros. And there's our answer. Let's do another example and a simpler one just so we can make sure that what we're doing makes sense. So if we have, starting at the right, 1 minus 0, we know that that's 1. And again, we go to the next column, 0 minus 1, we're going to have to borrow from here. So we make that a 0. It becomes two ones in the next column. We're going to have to borrow one of those, and it becomes two ones in the next column. So if two ones minus one of them leaves us with 1. The next column is 1 minus 0 leaves us with 1 and we're done. And we can check this. So we know that 1, 0, 0, 1 in decimal form, if, since we know that this would be the 1's column, the 2's column, the 4, and the 8, that 1, 0, 0, 1 is 9. And we can also check that 1, 0 would be 2. So 9 minus 2 gives us 7. So let's just double check to make sure our answer that we found before was 7. And again, this would have been 
the ones column, the twos column, and the fours. So we have a four, five, six, and seven. And since that's what we got, it seems like a pretty good check.